Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to How to Become an Animator. I'm Sir Wade and today we're doing a video that you guys have been asking for for a while. How to do materials and textures surfacing in your animated scenes. Now it's important to know that surfacing and lighting work really closely together because the materials you create are going to behave differently in different lighting conditions. So if you haven't seen my video on 3D lighting, I recommend also checking that out. It'll be good information to help you if you are going to do this kind of work and I'm not going to cover a lot of the lighting stuff today. We're just going to focus on the materials for the most part. I'm also super excited to share that this video is sponsored by Storyblocks and you may be wondering why a stock footage website would be sponsoring an animation themed YouTube video. We'll get to that because there's some really cool stuff you can do in 3D in particular with the assets that Storyblock has on their website. And one last thing to share before we jump in, if you guys watch my interview series, if you watch any of the videos where I interview different artists in the industry and they share whatever they feel like sharing, I'm doing a new thing where I want to start getting questions from you guys and at the end of every interview I do with anyone, I ask them the questions that I've prepared from the audience. If that sounds interesting to you, head over to Patreon. That's where I'll be posting all the interviews that I have lined up and asking for questions. And another new thing I'm gonna start doing on Patreon is I usually record these types of videos and I end up with like an hour of footage of like things I wanna share, but then I shave it down to like 20 minutes to keep the video shorter. I will release a longer version with all the stuff that I ended up cutting if it's useful information and that'll be over on Patreon as well. All right, now let's jump in. Now, I just created a couple objects here to just get started with the basics. Jump into the attribute editor. Now you use Control A or Command A on a Mac, and you can see that all these objects start off with what's called Lambert 1. This is the default material for everything in Maya. Now, the two most common places you're gonna be working with materials is either just directly here in the viewport with the attribute editor open, and that's usually a very basic approach to just get what you need done quickly. There is also a window dedicated to creating materials, and that's called the hypershade. It's this little blue button right here at the top, this little blue thing. And if you don't have that button for whatever reason, it's under Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. That's the backup location. And if you open the hypershade, you'll see that this is generally what it looks like. And if this freaks you out, don't worry. It's actually very simple. If I select Lambert 1, that is your, your default gray thing that we talked about a second ago. What you have here on the left is a big box full of different options that if you wanna create new materials, shaders, blah, 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 you make new stuff here. On the right, you have a preview window and you have the property editor, which is essentially the same thing as the attribute editor. It's actually the exact same menu. At the top, this is where all your stuff lives once you've created it. For example, Lambert 1, that's why it's there. And then this area here in the middle is the node editor. Don't let this freak you out, but this is pretty much a place that if you start to get deeper into making materials, you can start linking things together and it gets a lot easier to customize stuff using the node editor. Now, the just quick and easy way to do it is if you wanna make a new material, you select an object, hold down the right mouse click button, pulls up this marquee menu, go down to assign new material, and then this thing pops up and says, what kind of material do you want? These are Maya's basic materials. There's Blin, Lambert, and Fong, and those are the top three that you'll probably see. A Lambert is a matte, non-glossy texture. It's not reflective. It just is more like a piece of paper or like this little thing I have on my desk. It's, it's a light in here, it's fabric, but you can see that compared to something that's hard plastic, this is shinier, this is not. So this is like a Lambert. This is potentially a Blin or a Fong. So if I wanted to make this shiny, I would say Blin, it creates a new thing, and we'll just call this shiny. That's the name of our material, shiny. And if you want to just assign a color, you can either use this thing to go you know, left or right on value, or you can actually click on the little color box to get the color picker. So you can see here, you can dial in the color, you can mess with transparency. There's a bunch of different things here that you can change. With the blend, with the shiny ones, you get to specular shading, and that's kind of the how, how the shininess is going to work. That specular highlight, what color it's going to be, how reflective this object might be. And generally, you're not gonna see all the detail in the viewport. You actually have to do a render if you wanna see things like reflections happening. So like if I come over here, you might expect the reflection of this cube, but it's not gonna calculate reflection unless you render. So that's a quick way to just assign a quick material or a color is just right click, assign a new material, and we can just pick a Lambert, which is not gonna be shiny, and we'll make this box light blue. Now that's level one. That's probably the most basic way to do anything in here with you know, textures and materials. Um, you can also assign favorite or existing materials. So I can just say, put shiny on this, and then you can just throw it on that one as well. But let's take it one step further. Let's assign a new material. And there are a couple other options here. I'm not gonna get super into them, but just play with these things, and just mess around with them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a Lambert. I'm gonna make it pink for a second. Now, what happens if you don't want it to just be a standard color? You can actually link a texture to it, whether you have a file or you just wanna use something that Maya has for you. What all these little checker boxes here on the right of all these attributes are is to tell you that, hey, for color or for transparency or for whatever thing here, you don't have to be stuck with just the selector or just the slider. You can actually link something else into that spot. So for color, 
we can click the checkerboard and say, instead of a regular color, I wanna link something. Well, what are we gonna link? We can link a checker pattern, so let's try that. At first, nothing seems to have happened, but you gotta remember your Maya hotkeys. If you press the letter four, the letter, if you press the number four, you get wireframe. Five, smooth shaded, six, shows you textures. So a second ago we saw this, so just hit the number six and it jumps to texture view. So five and six will toggle on and off textures. And then you can change the colors and you can change the contrast and you know, there's different settings for each one. So let's go ahead and try something else. If I go back to Lambert 3, just undo, relink something, ramp. And a ramp is a gradient, green and pink, and maybe in the middle I'll throw in like a red just to spice it up. So now we've got this interesting donut that's got some different colors. And it's got a nice gradient, except that if we look at a certain part, it just kind of has a hard line. It just cuts off. Right there in the middle, it just has this seam. We're not gonna talk about UV maps today, but the whole thing is when you assign textures to objects in 3D, essentially what you're doing is you're taking a two-dimensional, generally, you're taking a two-dimensional image or color pattern or gradient or something, and you are wrapping it around a 3D object. That involves a process called UV mapping, which is basically just saying like, where do we wrap it? Like, where does the scene go? So we won't get into that, but you just need to know it exists. One more thing, you can also link a file. So if you have an image that you made yourself in Photoshop or something, there is a PSD file, which is made for Photoshop files. But if you just have like a JPEG or a PNG, you can actually link a file. So now we have an ocean donut. But yeah, you can, you can stick any texture, any image onto any surface. If you wanna go back to the image properties, it's this little thing where the checkbox used to be, it's now this little go to output. And you click on that and it takes you to the place where we were changing things, where either you have your, where your checkerboard options are, or in this case, where your, your image options are. If you wanna break this connection, just right click on color or whatever you have selected and say break connection and it will go back to normal. It's nice just to go assign material, grab a color, throw it on, but once you start doing textures or anything else more complicated, it's good to have the hypershade open. So let's go ahead and click the hypershade, pulls that up, and you can see now we have a couple different things. We have Lambert 1, we have Lambert 2 now, Lambert 3, because I didn't name them. You should always name your materials. Um, and we have Shiny, because that's the one I did name. Now if we click on Shiny, you can see how it's actually giving you a little bit of a preview of how this should look. But let's go another level deeper. So let's say you wanna make actual materials. These are just kind of Maya's basic things. They'll work with game engines. They'll work for pretty much anything. They're every, every 3D software can handle a Lambert or a Blinn. Now Maya has a ton of stuff, but I wanna use the Arnold shaders. So if I go ahead and click AI standard surface in the hypershade. Now what you don't wanna do is when you make an Arnold texture and you're previewing it and you're saying, okay, I'm gonna make it you know, darker or lighter. I'm gonna do some you know, stuff here. You don't wanna preview it in the hypershade where it looks like this with a gray background. You actually wanna change where it says hardware to Arnold. And you should do this for all your textures because watch the quality difference when you turn this on. That is vastly different than that. By switching it to Arnold, you're getting the real world calculations of what this material would actually look like versus like a 3D preview. And you can change the geometry if you don't like this shader ball, if you are actually doing you know, cloth development and you can actually use Alt and your camera tools and you can zoom in, you can move around. There's even hair, there's all kinds of different stuff you'll notice that there's actually a background. And if I move around the space, you can see that there's light coming in from one direction, it's shadowed on the other side, and that's what's lighting this object. And so you can really preview what this material is going to look like in different lighting conditions without having to do a lot of work. So I mentioned that this video is sponsored by Storyblocks, and I do a lot of videography work on the side of animation, so I actually use a lot of stock footage in general, you know, just to grab B-roll or locations, I can go to the website and just download stuff. So there's like regular stock footage applications that are super useful to just kind of pay a subscription and just be able to download whatever you want in HD or 4K and they have a lot of cool stuff. But what I wanna show you guys about specifically is that if you check out Storyblocks, they have tons of different things in video, audio, and images. I actually did like an animated campfire, one of my shots at Animation Mentor, and I used a fire asset just like this. But what's cool is they have all these different categories for things. They have a 360 and VR section, which is especially useful for what we're doing. So if we go to the 360 section, you can get studio quality stock clips and you don't have to have a 360 camera because those can get kind of expensive. Now there are some phones that can take a 360 photo. iPhones cannot do that, they take panoramas, which is not the same as a 360. My phone will take a 360 photo, but it won't take 360 video. So being able to just come here 
and grab videos is especially useful. And anything that you would get on here is royalty free. So you can use it for commercial work, you can use it for YouTube videos, you can use it for whatever you want. So it's really, really awesome. But what I've done is I've downloaded a couple of clips to show you how this works. So if I go back to Maya and just very quickly, I have this, this Arnold thing. I haven't done anything to it. I'm All I'm gonna do is say it's white. Let's just say it's a matte finish. It's not specular. It's just like a piece of paper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these three objects and I'm going to right mouse click and drag and say, assign material to selection. Let me delete the ground plane. Now the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna create an Arnold Sky Dome light, which is basically just this big orb that projects in by default white light. Now I'm gonna take color and instead of projecting white light, I'm going to say, link the color to something else. And I could just link it to the movie file. Like I could actually just link it up to the footage from Storyblocks, but I'm going to use file to do images because Maya is a little bit faster if you give it an image sequence versus, so each individual frame of the video versus the full video. I'm gonna say image name, I have this aerial drone shot, I've got a lake, I've got underwater and a wormhole. So let's start underwater, that's cool. So I'm just gonna grab the first frame, I'm gonna hit open, and right off the bat you can see that we are now inside that clip. So if I zoom out really far, you can see how that 360 video has now been wrapped around the scene. All I need to do to make this interesting is to turn on the lights. If I hit four, you get wireframe, five is shaded, six is textures if I had any, seven turns on the lights. So now you have this blue video file, image file, whatever it is, and it's projecting its light into the scene. So it's all very, very blue, so it's turning it very, very blue. Check this out. So if I turn on use image sequence, so if I'm using Maya 2019, which has the cached playback, it can just cache all this in memory, which makes it really nice because I don't have to wait for it to load. It grabs every frame, and now you have this, this 360 video in our software lighting our objects. Now this doesn't seem all that impressive just yet, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click my texture, and I'm gonna change some of the material properties. Right now, it's just a piece of paper. It's matte, there's no glossiness. Let's change that. Let's make it more reflective. And right there, you can start to see what's happening. I can make it kind of blurry. I can make it really sharp. Let's go a little bit blurrier. But now when I hit play, check this out. It's actually reflecting the entire video file in all of these objects. In the viewport, I'm not rendering anything. If I swap it to another environment, you can see that the, the lighting from this sphere changes the look of these objects drastically. And so here's the last one. If I throw this into like some kind of like wormhole texture, you can now see that we've got this crazy trippy thing. So if you wanna check out Storyblocks, I have a link down in the description. So you can go down, click on that, and it'll take you there and you can check out all this awesome stuff. And so this is a quick way to make an object look really interesting. And obviously like we barely even touched the surfacing controls. So now I'll show you some tips on how to do more texturing stuff. At a base level, your diffuse or your base color is just the standard color of the object. Metalness is reflecting the surroundings and itself directly. Specularity, so we turn off all the, the diffusion and the metalness, you can still see that we're, we're seeing something. We're actually seeing the light reflected from the environment. We're not seeing a reflection of the environment, we're seeing the light bouncing off of the object. If you have a very rough specular, it gets to be kind of a muted light versus really, really low roughness gives you a very glossy, polished look. Chrome is if you just kind of leave it at default and just crank all those values up. Now, these names go by different things. So transmission is the ability for light to pass through the object, which depending on your settings is gonna be glass or plastic or things. Subsurface is this. If I put a flashlight under my finger and then you know you can you can see this, you know, this red color, that's called subsurface scattering. It's light color that is beneath the, the surface, and when light hits it, it glows from within. And so you can give that property to your objects by picking a subsurface color and saying, okay, it's got kind of a fleshy red undertone. Coat, sheen, emission, like there's so many different things, that, but what's going to make it very convenient and easy to deal with are two things. And one I've shown you, one I have not showed you. The thing I have showed you, I'm just gonna do it again because it makes it easier to show you everything, is you create a sky dome light and you just link up an image or a video file. I'm gonna just grab this environment and I'm gonna hit the number seven. And you can see that we're kind of getting some of the colors. You're getting the greens and you're getting like the reds and a little bit of blues. You're gonna get a color palette on your object that's going to match your scene better than it did before. Let me show you one more thing that's gonna make your life easy. And if you watch for this long, I thank you by giving you the best tip in this video, which is if you don't wanna do all the work of texturing your object and that's just not what you're here for, you're, you wanna animate but you wanna make it look good, you select your object, 
grab your material, go to the Hypershade, open up your material. I'm gonna pop it in here just so we can see it. And what you do is, if you see this little button that says presets and there's an asterisk next to the word, that means there's stuff in there. Assign material to selection, there. Now that's actually looking better in general. That looks more realistic, period. Presets, what do you wanna do? Let's do balloon. You say replace, and it's going to make it a balloon texture. So I have brushed metal. Brushed metal, easy. Car paint is a specific type of shader. It gives you some really, really nice, like light caustics and different things like that. So you can change the color, maybe you want a red car. So you just change the color to red, and the rest is pretty much done for you, which is nice. So let's quickly just throw a, throw a sphere into the mix here. Standard surface, and I'm just gonna take the standard surface and say you are a bubble. So now we have created a bubble that can float through the scene. And if you wanna get crazy, you could grab your object, you could go to face mode or you know some different mode, and you could grab pieces of your object, just little sections if you wanna just be selective about it. And you could say that those objects should have a different material. And you can tell that material to be, I don't know, frosted glass. That could be interesting, get some modern architecture. Or we could do maybe jade. Jade's kinda cool, there we go. But anyways, that's a lot of stuff about materials and texture and like there's so much more to cover. Like if you wanna get more into materials and surfacing and texturing, I would highly recommend you check out Substance Painter. It was recently actually just bought by Adobe, so we'll see how that comes to play with Photoshop and After Effects and different things. But Substance Painter is probably the best tool that I know of that you should check out if you wanna do this stuff professionally or you wanna you know, get into this. But hopefully this gave you a little bit of an understanding of just kind of how to apply some basic stuff. You can do colors, you can do textures, you can do images to help kind of sell the effect. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching this video. I am not a surfacing artist or a texture artist, but if you want me to go more in depth in a later video, I can do that. But for now, I hope this is helpful and just kind of if you're animating something and you have a scene and you need to just spruce it up a little bit, get it out of that grayscale, Lambert One Zone. Hopefully this video will help you do it. So again, down in the links below, you will find a link for Storyblocks and a link to my Patreon if you want to ask questions to people that I'm interviewing in the industry. So thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next video.